Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a countdown timer using Python so we can track the time left until the new year. We're cutting it a bit fine. We've only got a few hours to go, but we've been so busy with the new year preparations over here that I haven't had time to record a new video. So apologies about that, but let's get started with this one. Here I've created a Python project in Visual Studio Code and I've created a virtual environment. I'm using Python 3.9, but you can use any Python version you want. We're not going to use any libraries except from the built-in libraries for the first version of this app. And then we're going to create another version that does use a third-party library. Let's get started. The first thing we have to do whenever we want to keep track of time and dates and things like that is we're going to use the time and the date time libraries that come with Python. Then we're going to define a couple of constants, the dates that we want to track. The first one is the new year. And this is going to be a datetime.datetime object for 2021-11, which is the 1st of January. And by default, since we're not providing a time in this date time object, this defaults to midnight. So that is exactly the date we want. Then we need a delta. This is going to be a essentially a slice of time that we want to make sure we surpass when we're checking whether we are in the new year or not. Because we're not going to be able to check whether the current date is exactly the same as the new year date because of microseconds that may pass too quickly, we need a slice of time that we're going to say, if we have passed the new year by this amount of time, then we are in the new year. So this is going to be a very small um, slice of time, which I'm going to define with uh, daytime dot time delta microseconds. And that's going to be equal to minus 0 0.000001, basically. It doesn't really matter how much you put in here, as long as it's a very small number and you want it to be negative. That way, when we pass the new year date by this amount of microseconds, we will know that we are in the new year. Then, because we want a countdown timer, we want to repeat a block of code once every second. So we're going to do while true, and we're going to repeat this block of code in here until we reach the new year. So the first thing to do is we want to uh, try to find out how long we want to repeat this for. So that is the number of seconds left until the new year or the amount of time left until the new year. So I'm going to define a variable time until new year, which is going to be new year minus the time right now. So that's daytime dot daytime dot now. Because the new year is in the future and now is, well, obviously in the present, this number is going to be greater than this one. So we're going to get here the amount of time left, but we're going to get it as a time delta. A time delta, which will give us the number of seconds or hours or days left until this date. So then what we want to do is check whether time until new year is less than the delta. This here will get smaller every time the loop runs as we recalculate the current time. So this will eventually shrink past the delta. It will become negative, meaning this will be greater than this. And when that happens, we know that we are in the new year. So we can print out Happy New Year. Because we are in an infinite loop, we do want to terminate the infinite loop at some point. So I'll put a break in there to tell Python that we've reached the end of the repetitions. Otherwise, we would just keep printing Happy New Year over and over. Finally, every other time that we're not in the new year yet, we want to print out the time until the new year. Now, because this is a time delta object, that's what's going to get calculated when we subtract two date time objects. This is going to print out as hours, for example, something like this 12, 35, 00, 0 or something like that. So hours, minutes and seconds. This is what's going to get printed out there. And of course, this will run over and over again very, very quickly unless we tell Python to wait for a second to repeat. And we can do that using the time library. So we can do in here time dot sleep one. 
and that is going to sleep or stop this program's execution for one second before continuing. And we're putting it at the end of the loop so that this will run, then we'll wait for a second, and then we'll run again. Remember that when we do reach the break, then this won't run anymore, and we will just terminate the loop. All right, so open up the terminal of choice, and then activate your virtual environment, and then simply run it. And you'll see that we get out the current countdown until the new year. So at the moment, we've got about 12 hours left. So you've got plenty of time to code this yourself. But you can see it's getting printed out. You know, it, it's okay, but it's not amazing because we've got the number of microseconds there at the end. And this is obviously there's still a long time left. So we're going to make a few improvements. But if you want a simple countdown to the new year, then you've got it here. And now we're going to continue and make a few improvements using the rich library. So that's me stopped that program, we're gonna stop that. And we're gonna make a few changes in here. The first thing to do once you've activated your virtual environment is to do pip install rich, and you're going to need this library in order to do a few of the things that we're going to do. Now, the things are all going to be related to formatting. So we're going to be able to print things out in different colors, and we're going to put some emoji into the console and things like that. So if you don't want to do any of that, you can skip the rich library. But I have installed it. So we're going to do from rich import print. And that is going to override the default print. So now we're going to be using rich print from now on. You can already see if we run this file that things look a little bit different just because of how rich prints numbers. But we're going to be making a few more changes as we go along. The first thing I want to do is I want to print out the countdown timer in a little bit of a nicer way. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new variable, which is the total number of seconds left until the new year. So whereas this gives me a time delta, which is very useful to work with, sometimes just having the number of seconds left is a little bit easier because it's just a number. So we're going to do time until new year dot total seconds. Then we're going to calculate how many hours, minutes and seconds are left until the new year. So we're going to do hours and remainder equal div mod of seconds left over 3600. And we've got a blog post on DivMod. If you want to check out uh, that blog post to learn more about what DivMod means, feel free to do that. It's linked in the description of this video. Then we're going to do minutes and seconds is DivMod of the remainder over 60. So now we've got hours, minutes and seconds, so we can print things out a little bit better. Instead of printing out time until the new year, we're going to print an F string of int of hours. Then we're going to print int of minutes. And then we're going to print int of seconds and make sure to not forget any brackets in there. So this is going to print the hours, minutes and seconds. They're all floats by default. So that's why we're turning them to integers. And normally when we're printing times, we usually separate things by a colon. So I'm going to put the colon instead of a space everywhere. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that if, for example, we have something like 12, 5, 35, if we've got five minutes left until the 12th hour, we want to print 05 instead of just five. And we can do this with F strings just by after each number, putting colon O to D. And that we're going to copy into there and there. But you normally don't do that for hours. So that's just going to be in the minutes and seconds. And it's going to print them all with a leading zero if it's less than 10. All right, let's check that out and see how that prints. You can see that we're now getting this a little bit nicer. We've got our leading zero. And feel free to remove the O2D there and see how that prints out. And also we've got our leading zero in the seconds and things are looking pretty good. So now let's print a slightly different message if we've only got 10 seconds left until the new year. So I'm going to define another constant, which is going to be a time delta as well, but for seconds equal 10. So when we have 10 seconds left, we're going to do something different. We have to change our if statement here, we're going to do if time until new year less than soon. And then inside it, we're going to do if time until new year less than delta. And inside that we're going to put this, but otherwise, we're going to print something else. And what we're going to print is something like int seconds without the O2D because we don't want that in here since we want to show each number individually. And then we're going to put a partying face. 
So when you print things out using the rich console, you can put emoji shortcodes like these and they will render out into emoji. However, at the moment, we don't have a way to test this out, which is not great. We don't want to wait until 10 seconds before the new year to debug our application. So we're going to increase the soon time there so that we can run this statement there just now. So I've made it very large and now we can go in here and you can see that we are only printing the seconds, but we've got the partying face in there. All right, we can do a couple more things with rich print as well. We can use BB code style syntax to do things like bold, for example, and make some text bold. Although it doesn't work in the Windows console all that well, maybe it'll work in your ones. The Windows consoles are not amazing, um, but yeah. So we can do that, we can put the bold inside square brackets, and then at the end of the string that we want to make bold, we put this closing tag, essentially, inside square brackets. And in the Happy New Year text, we're going to put bold and red, as well as that closing tag. So this is going to be bold and red text when it does print out. So let's see if this turns out to be bold. Let me tell you that it won't in my case, but it might in yours. So let's see if the Happy New Year does print out as red at least. In order to do that, we're going to make the delta just as big as soon. And that way we can see if that runs and runs successfully. And you can see that we do print it out as red, which is excellent. Remember to undo that, otherwise you'll be printing Happy New Year a little bit too early and change this back to 10 seconds as well. So that's everything for this video. Thank you guys for joining me. I know we haven't posted videos for a couple of months almost, but I promise that we're going to get back to it in the new year. We've got a lot of stuff planned, including some web development live streams that are coming up here in this YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a great time, a good holiday, and you can spend some time with your families. And I wish you a very happy new year, and I hope you'll accomplish all your programming-related goals, as well as any other goal that you have, of course. But focus on programming in the new year. We're going to have a lot of stuff for you. So thank you guys for joining me once again. I'll see you soon.